Okay, we're gonna try this again. So, <laughs> I've been trying to do this vlog for I, hours now. Okay, I just keep on to stop and pause and start over because I lose my train of thought. So, I'm gonna try and figure out how to do this on my computer is what, I'm <laughs> is what I need to do. So that way the screen looks better and it's wide and like the lighting's better because this is not flattering for me at all. I haven't did my makeup today. I went a little heavy on the freckles though. But now I just gotta now I just gotta rock it, so oh well, it is what it is, right? But um so I wanted in this video to talk about body image. That's what I wanted to do. So um I'm gonna talk about like some eating disorders, some body dysmorphia, that kind of stuff. So, um, if any of that's triggering to you, please make sure that you avoid this video. We're just gonna jump right into it. Second vlog and we're already going for it. So, um, <clears throat> I wanted to talk about this because there's been like this question that I've had, sorry, <laughs> um, this question that I've had that is it easier to build your self-esteem if you've always been chunky, always been heavier, or, um, you know, if you were skinny at one point and then got fat eventually, right? Or heavier, eventually you gained weight. I'm just curious, just because I've been very heavy my entire life. Um, by third grade, I was like 180 pounds. I've always been really, really big. I've always used food as comfort. Um, I had a rough childhood, so I just would eat to feel better. Go to grandma's house and grandma would always be like, are you hungry? Do you want something? Which is what grandmas do, right? That's what they're supposed to do. So that's just what I always, what I always did, which affected me into adolescence and now adulthood. Cause even now when I'm sad or stressed, I eat. When I'm stressed out, I immediately want to just eat peanut butter out of the jar, okay? It's just a coping skill. Um, not a healthy coping skill, obviously. Um, but, I've always been really heavy and I only started losing weight until after I had Orion when I was just so tired of hating myself and hating the way I looked and tired of being heavy. So I had just crash coursed some keto and I lost like 30 pounds in a month and just continued to just kind of get, like lose weight. And I feel a lot better now this is probably the best I've ever looked in my entire life, which is awful to, you know, think and, but it's the truth, right? But there's people out there, I think, who used to be skinny and then they've gained weight and now they hate themselves and used to be. Like, you always see those posts on Facebook, like, I wish I was the fat that I thought I was in high school or something to that effect. And I'm just curious if, like, if it's easier to always be heavy or if it's, or if it's easier to just, like, I don't know. I don't know. I really, I have no idea. Um, but I also wanted to just talk about, you know, body dysmorphia after you have babies. So, you know, some of you have had babies. You know how hard it is to to feel good about yourself. I see a lot about a lot of it in my mom groups, where they're always like, "How do I fix my stretch marks or get rid of my C-section scar or how do I make my skin look normal again um, after having a baby?" It's it's something that a lot of people don't talk about the process after having a baby with your body. I mean, we all talk about, you know, losing the baby weight and snapping back into your post-baby or your pre-baby body, right? But no one talks about the process of reclaiming your body after pregnancy. After having your baby, the process it takes to reclaim your body, to reclaim your your insides because it doesn't feel like yours after you have a baby it doesn't feel like it's your body anymore you just spent all that time 
watching everything you ate, making sure everything was good, making sure your body was okay because you were growing a person. And now that that person's gone, what do you do? It doesn't feel like yours anymore. So you have to go through this process of reclaiming your body and remembering that it's your body and your vessel in this life. And that's really hard. And I, no one talked to me about it after I had my son. No one told me about it. No one told me the struggles I was going to go through of feeling like my body was my body again. And it took me months, probably even a whole year. I had like depression. I was miserable. I was so unhappy. And no one told me about it. No one talked about it. And then when my cousin got pregnant, she was like, my body doesn't feel like mine anymore. And I was like, everyone has this. Everyone experiences this. Reclaiming your body after pregnancy. It's, it's the longest process ever. And no doctor talks about it. No no physician, no nurse, no one ever tells you after you have a baby, you have to reclaim your body. You have to go through the process of finding yourself all over again and, and getting rid of the emptiness that you feel in your insides, you know? And the body dysmorphia that comes after it like you just grew this human and you your body did this amazing thing of birthing it regardless of if you had a c-section or you know you regular birth epidural not it doesn't matter you birthed a baby okay you did an amazing thing and you should be so proud of you for doing this amazing thing but now you have all of this societal pressure to snap back into your your pre-baby body to to be healthy and fit and skinny if you are skinny <laughs> and to just look great and lose all the baby weight but it's not that simple it's not that easy it doesn't just happen to a lot of people and even for those people that it does happen to you still experience a body dysmorphia you still have stretch marks that you didn't have before. You still have loose skin that you weren't aware could even become loose. And now you have to go through this process of, of fixing it and feeling better about yourself. Your body will never be the same. It will never be the same. All of your organs rearrange themselves to hold this baby. And if you're like me and you had a c-section all of those organs had to be pulled out of you to pull the baby out and then pushed back in and now you have this big scar it's really not that big it's probably like wait this big yeah it's not, it's not that bad but you have this scar now where it's never it's never gonna go away it's gonna be like that forever and then you have phantom kicks and you have loose skin. I had like a, a belly beforehand and like loose skin, but it wasn't as bad as it is now. And it's never gonna look the same. It's never gonna tighten up. It's never gonna look normal. It's just always gonna be like that. And I stretch marks have never bothered me personally, but I know that they bother a lot of other people. I know men that they bother, not like men on, you know, men who have stretch marks, <laughs> it bothers them. And if they're just stretch marks, it's just because you grew. That's it. That's all they're for. You should appreciate your body and all of the growth it's done and all of the pounding it's taking. Okay. It's taken a lot of growth and a lot of really ugly clothes <laughs> a lot of like running and tripping and skinning your knee and you know broken bones if you've broken bones and bee stings if you've been stung by a bee and ant bites and burns and cuts and babies and 
rough sex even, okay? It's taken a lot. It's done a lot for you and you should appreciate it for what it is. And a lot of you who have body dysmor dysmorphia, I have body dysmorphia, people who have um, eating disorders, you know, whether you're anorexic bulimic or you're an emotional eater, which is considered an eating disorder. I have that eating disorder. I wouldn't say that I have one, but you know, it technically is considered one, you know, obesity. It's, it's an eating disorder and it's something that we deal with every day. And it's hard to love your body. It's hard to love yourself after, you know, you've Put it through so much and with all of this this pressure from society to be cute and healthy and fit and skinny and lovely and whatever and then to like not be too skinny right to not be too skinny to not be too thin to not be too fit it's like you have to find a happy healthy medium to fit in with society which is complete bogus Okay, that's so much pressure on all of us. It's like fat men can't be fat, but fat women are fat, right? But some men like big girls and some women like big girls and some women like big men. Some men like big men. And it, uh, beauty is always in the eyes of the beholder. It always is. And that beholder should be you. You should be that guy, you know? You need to be the one who loves you. You need to be the one who who loves the way you look, who appreciates your skin for what it's done, for the growth that it's done for you, for the weight fluctuation, and for putting up with all your bullshit, okay? You need to appreciate your body. You are the beholder. Fuck everyone else, okay? I... I've always been a big girl. I've always been a big girl. And I will always struggle with my body image. I will always struggle with not having a small enough waist and a big enough butt and big enough titties and a flat stomach. I will always struggle with that. And I know that there's girls out there who will always struggle with not being a healthy weight. Like, I've never been big or I've never been a healthy weight I've always been underweight I wish I could gain weight I know people like that and when they do gain weight I'm like fuck yes you did it you did it look at you go yeah that's awesome because we should all be appreciating each other and supporting each other's goals even if they're not your goals it doesn't matter we need to be lifting each other up, not putting each other down, especially when it comes to our bodies and our body image. And your self-esteem is different than your self-worth. You, your body weight and you, the way you look in a mirror and the way you look to maybe society does not determine your worth, okay? You are amazing and this beautiful human being as long as you're a good person. It doesn't matter if you're 250 pounds or 114 pounds. It doesn't matter if you have a big butt or big titties, okay? You're amazing and wonderful as long as you're a good person. What you look like does not determine who you are. It just doesn't. And the only person that you need to be, that you need to impress is you. The only person you should ever compare yourself to is the person you were yesterday. And we all have our own issues with body dysmorphia. We all have our own issues with our body image. And we all might be a little judgy. So let's step, step back and not be so judgy anymore. Okay. You, you need to focus on you. And you need to remember that your stretch marks do not define you. And your weight does not define you. Weight fluctuates so drastically all the time. I know that my weight fluctuates crazy. Even my gynecologist was like, yeah, your weight 
crazy fluctuation. That's probably why, you know, you have your abnormal periods and that's why you have your mood swings because your fluctuation in weight. And I was like, wow, I didn't know my weight really did that. <laughs> but it still didn't determine my worth because I know I'm a good person. And you should all know that too. You should all strive to be good people, not pretty. Because <laughs> being pretty, it can only get you so far, you know? At the end of this life, when your, your vessel is finished, the only thing that you're going to have left is your insides, your soul, you know? That's what's going to transfer into the next vessel or go to heaven, depending on what you believe in. <laughs> so you need to be a good person because that's what's important, not what's on the outside. And we should all appreciate and love our bodies and ourselves for what we've, what we've put our bodies through. And we should appreciate our bodies for putting up with our nonsense brain telling us that we look awful and society's pressures telling us that we need to be better looking we need to be fit and we need to have a six pack okay this goes for men too there's so many men out there who are like oh i'm fat i need to have big arms and i need to be ripped oh you know no you don't you don't need to do that you need to be a good person <laughs> because what you look like on the outside isn't it's really not that important you be happy for you on the um, on the inside on the outside <laughs> and you be a good person on the inside and men should not have to sit there and and feel inadequate because they don't look like fucking what's the guy's name who plays aquaman that guy yeah so just because you don't look like aquaman or the rock or <sighs> I don't know, you know, the other, the other ones that are Captain America. See, I'm not good with names. Chris Evans, that's his name. <laughs> Just because you don't look like him doesn't mean like you're ugly. Okay, you don't have to be ripped and, you know, have lots of muscles to be, to be good, to be amazing, to be worth it. Because... You know, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, and the beholder is you. You need to be a good person. You need to be happy with the way that you look in the mirror. But fuck what everyone else thinks. Fuck if they say that you're too skinny. Fuck if they say that you're too heavy. So what if you're not thick enough for fucking the guy three doors down, okay? You need to be happy for you. You need to feel good about you. And you need to like what you see in the mirror. And if you're not, then work on it. If you are unhappy with the way that you look, make the choices and the decision to be better for yourself. You don't need to be happy for anyone else. If you're like, I feel good looking like this. I feel happy because I feel like I look cute. Rock it. If everyone else is like, mm, it's not cute, fuck them. Because you are the only one that matters. You need to like you. And I know that this whole thing was like about body image. And I feel like I kind of rambled on. But that's what these are about, right? Vlogs are about me rambling on about lots of lots of stuff. <laughs> but the main... Okay, so back. <laughs> let's, let's circle this back around, okay? <sighs> what you look like on the outside. Your body image does not determine your worth. Your stretch marks do not determine your worth. Your weight does not determine your worth. You need to be happy with you. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder and you are the beholder. And you need to feel good and cute regardless, okay? You are cute. You want to wear that skirt, but you're like, ah, oh, I got fat girl legs. Fuck it, wear that skirt. Because you deserve nice things too. You deserve to feel cute. I got fat girl legs. Okay. I call it fat girl legs. But it's just. It, it makes me feel better. Okay. <laughs> I've got. I've got cellulite. I've got saggy loose skin. I've got. 
I've got like lymphedema, lymph yeah, lymphedema <laughs> on my on my thigh. I've got a saggy belly. I've got stretch marks. I've got it all, man. And I still wear that skirt. I still wear that crop top because I'm cute, okay? You should all feel like you're cute too. If I can wear it, if Lizzo can wear it, okay, we all know who Lizzo is. If Lizzo can wear it, if Lizzo can like do better for her and she can wear that crop top and that fucking one piece and that nice ass dress and fucking she can wear that fucking bikini showing off her ass cheeks, okay? You can do it too because she's happy with her. I'm happy with me. You need to be happy with you. You need to feel good because you're beautiful. You're gorgeous. You are amazing. And you're hot, man. So fucking work it. Fucking work it.